Welcome back. You're watching To The Point. One of the surprise, if not disappointing, outcomes of the recent elections was the result for the Aam Aadmi Party. It fielded 434 candidates, 413 lost their deposit, and only four got elected, which is a success rate of just 0.92%. How does the Aam Aadmi Party respond to this result? That's the key issue I shall discuss today with one of its top leaders, himself a reputed political analyst, and also, of course, the chief spokesman of the party, Yogendra Yadav. Yogendra Yadav, let me start with a few questions about how badly your party did before I ask you why you did so badly. And let's begin with those figures. 434 candidates, 413 lose their deposit and only four get elected. Was that a root shock? For me, no. It's possible some of my colleagues, some friends, some volunteers may have had these fantastic expectations that will replicate Delhi all over the country. But remember, this was a debut election. I'm not saying there were no disappointments. Not getting a single seat in Delhi was a disappointment. Varanasi result was a disappointment. But what were the realistic expectations? In a debut election, if you go look at last 40 years, which are the two parties which have made a national debut and have now survived as a national party? BJP in 1984 got two seats, 7% votes, but they had a past history to draw upon. BSP, three seats, 2% votes, they had a caste community vote to draw upon. Here is a new party, 18 months, 2% national vote share, second breakthrough after Delhi in Punjab. Actually, I'm not at all in that sense, uh, this was not a rude shock. But what about that success rate of just 0.92%? That's what happens to all debut parties. So you're not surprised at all? I mean, honestly, why did we put up 400 plus candidates? Did we expect them to win? No. There was a national sympathy, some support. We wanted to trap it before it evaporated. What about Arvind Kejriwal's own performance in Varanasi? Right to the end, he kept saying he was going to win. In the end, he lost by over 370,000. And people asked, was he simply being brave? And was this just bravado? Or did he fail to read the writing on the wall? He's brave in the best sense of the term. He's taken risk. When he contested against Sheila Dixit, everyone said this was foolish. I must say, I went to Varanasi. I participated in the last two rallies. And the public response was so amazing. Yes, we lost. We lost by big margins. And I said, that's a disappointment. But the fact that he contested meant so much to so many other candidates, including me fighting in Gurgaon. Except it's that you didn't get any wins as a result. It may have meant a lot emotionally, but that's it. But Karan, politics is about so many things. It's about planting seeds. It is about giving message that our party was willing to put its top leader against Narendra Modi meant so much to our volunteers and workers all over the country. But look at the outcome in Haryana where you yourself were contesting before these parliamentary elections. Your party believed that when the state elections happened later this year, you had a good chance of actually coming to power. But the outcome in the parliamentary elections was extremely disappointing. In all the ten parliamentary constituencies, your candidates were either fourth or fifth. You ended up with a total vote share across all ten parliamentary constituencies of some 421,000, which in fact is less than the winning margin of the BJP candidate in Faridabad. So if Arvind Kejriwal actually breathed spirit and courage into the party, it didn't produce anything. Haryana was a disappointment. After Delhi, we expected Haryana to be our second breakthrough state. It didn't happen. It happened in Punjab, where we actually didn't even expect. We realized, in fact, rather too late in the campaign that Haryana is where the, you know, we were not getting. Modi wave, or that strong pro-BJP sentiment was overriding Did through Haryana. Did you misread Haryana? Um, we did not misread it in the month of January. In January, we did polls. We have clear evidence to say that in January, we were riding a wave. But post-Delhi election, post-Delhi resignation, as our stock fell in Delhi, it, it fell also in did in the entire NCR region, it fell in Haryana right. as well. This is an excellent point for me to now ask you why you've done so badly. And I'll come to Delhi in a moment's time. But to begin with, as you reflect on this outcome, why do you think you've done badly or do you believe people had overestimated and exaggerated how well you'll do and therefore it was inevitable that in relation to that overestimation any outcome would be disappointed? Look, there are two parts. One is the area where we were expected to do well, reasonably, where we did less than what we were expected Delhi. to do. Delhi, the areas around Delhi, a bit of Haryana, we should have done much better than we did. 
their post delhi election situation post resignation situation damaged us so the, but the rest of the country rest you. of the country i think people had uh, may have had unrealistic expectations let's we split. did exactly what we thought we would do through these elections in the rest of the country let's split the two and take them one by one to begin with delhi and the area around delhi did the resignation after 49 days which suggested to many that your party perhaps lacks staying power cost you heavily did people decide it's not worth voting for aam aadmi because they'll disappear of course it did karan every one of us faced this question that bagoda label which the bjp sort of stuck on us it did stick yes we every one i mean i met so many candidates everyone said look i got tired of answering this question over and over again and as arvind himself said a few days ago that the manner in which we took that decision did not involve the people the way our initial decision just did. the manner or the decision as well we are reviewing it we are looking at it um, certainly the manner we can say for sure Pe- if people were consulted you know in in a sense the decision to form the government was more risky and controversial decision to quit was less risky but it's the second which cost us much more the first one did not but you do accept that it's not just the manner in which the decision was taken and communicated it's also possible that the decision itself may have offended and annoyed people the decision itself is something we are looking hard at it is clear that people want to see someone who is serious about governance they loved us when we were in agitation they loved us when we came and brought in new reforms this suggested lack of seriousness they people read uh, people wanted to see signs of capable governors people who took governance seriously people who could govern and in our decision to resign the manner in which it was communicated the manner in which we took people somehow read that these people are probably not serious about governance and you, that did cost us a lot do you think this question about your seriousness about your commitment to govern was also raised by arvind dharna and somnath bharti's raids in khirki those raised moral issues those raised issues of effectiveness those raised issues of image all of which i would say rebounded on you as well all these things put together create a package and gives your image gets formed by everything put together we did enormously good work during for governance beginning with the audit of electricity things with the But water is serious that. yeah somehow the overall package that they remembered the final condensed image was of people who you know probably they are too young and too new to be trusted with governance that's the image we somehow left people with all the very we did, well put at the critical we, moment we, people yeah. didn't have trust in you we as i said we did some remarkable governance work but no one remembered it somehow the me- abiding memory that very large number of people especially those who went by media their uh, memory was of people who you know who who were you know maybe maybe they need to learn a little more before we can trust them with governance that is that is somehow the impression although if you speak to ordinary people in delhi Okay. those who uh, those who were at the bottom men they remember this government very in very Let's positive move light beyond delhi because we actually contested 434 seats and the vast majority actually 410 or 15 were actually outside the delhi area there again people say you did disappoint you now you're saying to me that you didn't expect to do better but i want to put two questions to you Do you think you were over ambitious? Do you think you stretched yourself too far fielding more candidates than BJP or Congress when you didn't have the resources and you didn't have the infrastructure to back them up? This was in a sense tokenism and that's why people said what's the point of voting for them? They're not going to be serious contenders here anyway. Uh Karan, I think there's a complete misunderstanding about what a debut election is like. go back look at any party this is exactly what debut elections are But all about for all the big put up so many candidates right across the country 434 if, if they are serious and if they have a potential that's exactly what they do the whole point is in the month of january we had in you know in kerala i didn't know we had a single volunteer in kerala but we had so many messages coming there the fact that we could Let put up candidates in kerala today has given me an organization and a unit there. maybe but look at karnataka again it was a debut i accept you put up 27 candidates every one of the 27 lost their deposit and in fact the indian express points out that overall you only got as many votes as nota how does it make a difference karan the whole point i mean how do i look at it whether it's business or it's politics you have to make a beginning somewhere the beginning is a very modest beginning the question for me are two one 
Now, did we manage to reach our name, name recognition, our jhadu in every nook and corner of the country? I wouldn't say every nook and corner, but we managed to reach our name, our symbol, and the fact that we exist, our presence was marked in a very large portion of and the country. Number two? Number two, volunteers. This I went to Karnataka, I went to Tamil Nadu, I went to those constituencies where we may have got less than nota things. But this party has more than one lakh people, volunteers, who gave up everything and came for that idealism. This is a great contribution to the party and to the country. Now, before I come to the reasons why you did so badly, and more importantly, how you recover, how you recover from this, I want to ask you a bit about Punjab. Suddenly, four relatively unknown candidates did unexpectedly well, and you got four seats in a state where you didn't expect perhaps to get any. What do you think made the difference in Punjab that didn't work anywhere else? Uh, it was not the organization. In politics, the relationship between what you do and what you get is always very strange. So what made the difference we, in the uh, Our candidates were not entirely unknown. One has been a former MP. Bhagwant Man is a celebrity in Punjab. Uh, it's only outside Punjab that they are but less none known. of them were expected to win. Um, we got this, began to get this signal around January and January that something very special was happening in Punjab. We were unable to read it very clearly. We initially thought it's over enthusiasm of our workers and so on. But uh, as we went along, signals were stronger. And I think the reason why something happened was simply the supply side of politics. There was a vacuum. The vacuum was created by a deep sense of anti-incumbency against Akali Dal BJP on and the Congress one Congress not being an alternative. And, and UPA, on the other hand, they were disgusted, they were looking for an alternative in the way they were not in many other in states. Fact, in Rajasthan, they were not looking for fact, an alternative. In fact, Yogendra what you're really suggesting is in fact an even bigger problem for you because what you won was on the basis of a protest vote. People didn't want to vote for the Akali Dal, they didn't believe Congress was a suitable alternative and in a sense, you were a protest vote, but a protest vote... You didn't hear the full story. That's one part of it. And the reason why they picked up, they were looking for an alternative, but why did they pick us up? One, because this was the one party which was willing to talk about the biggest problem of Punjab, namely drugs. No other party was speaking about it. Two, on 1984... That's not true. Amarinder Singh spent a lot of time talking about drugs and he blamed Majita in particular. He embarrassed, in fact, Arun Jaitley on the drug issue because Arun Jaitley said he was getting support from the man who was responsible for drugs you in see, the Amritsar Majha the area. Drug menace is not new in Punjab. Congress has fought many elections and has evaded this question and allegations locally are that local Congress politicians are as okay. much involved in So you in scored it. points because you talked drugs. about drugs? And 1984, we set up the SIT. And this is something which Angali B BJP have been talking about for three decades. Right. They haven't done it. This is again interesting. You're countering my question that this is a protest vote and protest votes are unpredictable so you can't build on them by answering that in fact you cater to two key demands that others ignored in Punjab. The drug menace and the need for justice for 84. Two issues which proves, made us more credibility. But what it proves is that you only succeeded in Punjab because you had actually worked out the local needs of the population and responded to them elsewhere in the country where you didn't work out the local needs and respond to them, you did badly. And to be able to succeed elsewhere, you need to replicate what you did in Punjab right across the country. Can you? That's the problem. Can it's you? It's a function of opportunity space that opens up, which is not under your creation. You know, I can't suddenly create opportunity space in Haryana tomorrow. And second, how you fill that space. In Punjab, there was an opportunity space that suddenly opened up and our colleagues there were imaginative enough to Wasn't fill it, it with something that positive. that opportunity space and you happened to be there present at a time when people were disenchanted with both SAD and Congress? Luck played a big part. You could call it luck, you could call it contingency, you could call it historic uh, changes. This is exactly what history is all about. But how do you build on history elsewhere in the country hereafter? What do you do now to ensure that you move beyond this, what others call low points that you reached. That's the one thing I want to uh, get across to you. It's Karan. not a low point. They, I mean, we have moved from zero to two. You may think it's low, but I would zero insist. Zero to four, actually. You're underestimating. Zero to four in seats, yeah. but zero to two percent. I constantly look at vote percent. I don't look at seats at all. More than one crore people in this country have voted for this party. More, and for every one person that has voted, 
at least two or three thought about us and say maybe not this time. Let me tell you That's why a I reservoir. There's a very large reservoir which we need to tap. We need to go back to them, build more trust. But for me, it is a small and significant step forward. Well, I'll tell you why I called it a low point and I'll tell you why I question whether this is really a significant step forward because if you compare your Delhi performance with the performance in December 2013, in December 2013 you won 28 constituencies. Analysts say that in 24 of those 28 consistencies, consistencies, you actually lost ground in the parliamentary elections. So whenever the state elections are held next in Delhi, you actually have ground to make up. Instead of advancing, you've receded. Uh, in Delhi, the situation is complex. I would say overall, yes, we are disappointed. Our vote share has gone up actually in Delhi, as you know. We've added four points in Delhi. But Congress has lost a lot and BJP has gained enormously. So yes, our gap with the BJP has increased. But that's partly because in Delhi, Lok Sabha election is not about MPs, it's about PM. No, but whenever the next state election happens, and it may happen in the next three, four months, people predict there'll be a Modi wave. And if there is a Modi wave, will our Martin be able to stand up to it? Or will you be swept aside? I do not know if there would be a Modi wave. I think I don't think Modi is likely to contest for chief ministership of Delhi. Uh, and what he we know in Delhi... He just himself for a Modi wave to happen. Um, he was very much BJP's anointed candidate by the time elections happened in Delhi in December. So, and there was no Modi wave then. There was, you know, people make but a difference between an election for prime minister and election for chief minister. Yes, it's going to be a tough election for us, I, that, I, that I know. I mean, you know. But do remember, number one, Congress is about to be decimated in Delhi. They but had 24%. The benefit may not go to you. That's what I'm saying. I the decimation of Congress know. may translate into a bigger vote for BJP. You, once again, may find that you're receding. Just think hard about who are the voters who voted for Congress even in this election and where would they vote next time? You know, it's not just in Delhi that the situation looks bleak. If you look at Haryana, where you were really hopeful before the parliamentary elections happened, of the 90 assembly constituencies that that state has, you didn't get, you didn't win even one of them. Yeah, yeah, All no, nowhere close months. to winning any of them. No, no, no. We have a long way to cover. We have a very long struggle. All I'm trying to tell Karan is that this is exactly what political beginnings are all about. And I suspect that's exactly what happens to television channels as well. When so, you make a beginning, you go, I mean, this is what a ch television channel would do one month after it's launched. It would have a rating of 0.0 something percent. And then you look slowly at the quality. Okay. You look at the quality, you look at perception, you look at how you are doing, and you build up. Creating alternative politics is a very long term process, and, and I'm prepared for that. I'm glad you're being honest because what you're really saying in layman's language is you have to now grit your teeth, yeah. work hard, work tirelessly, not necessarily look for immediate rewards, but struggle with the medium term or perhaps even the long term as the horizon that you hope to achieve. It is a long, hard, tireless and sometimes thankless road ahead. It's very well put, Karan. I, and I would endorse every single word and then wait for opportunity spaces to open up. You don't know where they might open up. Suddenly they might open That's up. That's where Odisha. luck comes in and changes That's fortunes. political contingency comes up. But I just want to remind you that from Gujarat to Odisha, there is a belt in this country where opposition does not exist. And that's in a sense what I want to now come to. And I want to ask you a couple of questions, not as an Aadmi party leader, but as one of India's more reputed political analysts and sophologists. First of all, how do you as a political analyst respond to Mr. Modi's 282 seats for the BJP and 336 for the NDA alliance? What do you think caused this seat change? Earlier, I used to think that it was UPA's uh, performance. UPA had, by the end of its second regime, UPA had created a moral, political and governance vacuum in the country. And people said, anyone but them. But I think that would be inadequate explanation. Mr. Modi also did something positive. He created a BJP, was viable, that is BJP's strength. Mr. Modi was visible, that was his strength. And uh, I must say, without uh, sounding bitter or complaining, I think he was packaged brilliantly. This was perhaps the most brilliant advertising campaign in the history of Indian politics. So All this put together, and there was strategy, and there was enormous resources of a kind that Indian elections have never seen. So All you're this saying put three together. things. It was the vote for the man and his message. It was excellent packaging advertising. It was good strategy, and added to which, all of this was given a wind of support by the collapsing UPA. 
Yeah, collapsing UPA created a vacuum into which anyone could have stepped in uh, and the most viable and the most visible force stepped in and they stepped in like never before. What about the new Congress party? It's completely collapsed. It's down to just 44 seats. There are 10 states where it doesn't feature at all. There is no state where it's in double digits. Are you worried about the Congress party's future or do you think it can bounce back as it keeps saying it will? I cannot be a political analyst alone. And as an Aam Aadmi Party person, I cannot be worried about what's happened to Congress. I can be worried about the country. I do not think decline of the Congress is necessarily a bad news for the, con for the country. The Congress with 44 seats, more, uh, 44 is bad, but more importantly, uh, with Rahul Gandhi in, in, in leadership, I remember how Rahul responded to UP's defeat. He just disappeared. He just kept withdrew. Remember, Congress party is a party which is not used to being in opposition. Fighting battle on the street in adverse circumstances is something Congress has never done. In 77 not they did it Modi. with Sanjay Gandhi and Indira Gandhi with their backs to the wall. Indira Gandhi did that. And she, she had a great, yeah, I mean, um, well, the less said the better. But uh, Indira Gandhi showed a political grit and determination Rahul of is the not kind. his grandmother's son in that respect. Yeah, I doubt if Congress would be able to take on Modi, uh, take on uh, street battles, act as a political opposition and that to my mind Karan is the opportunity space for Aam Aadmi Party. The country would have parliamentary opposition. Will it have political opposition? That's a space Aam Aadmi Party has to occupy with grit, with determination, with enormous hard work, with very few rewards. But that's why we came to politics. We didn't come to politics expecting to get cheers next morning. And Arvind Kejriwal agrees with your analysis that the collapse of Congress and the belief that Rahul hasn't got it in him to bring Congress back is the opportunity that awaits the Aam Aadmi Party. He needs to step in to that vacuum and occupy it. I mean, or the entire party would see it. This is not, uh, but, you know, peculiarly my analysis. I think anyone in the country can see that this is, this is what's, if we take a middle term view of politics, Congress could simply disappear from some parts of the country. The record of the last 20 years shows whenever Congress went under in one state, it never bounced back. Tamil Nadu, Bihar, UP, name a state, wherever they go down, in, in Delhi would be the next one. Congress will never spring back in Delhi. This is a space waiting to be occupied. Mr. Modi needs a genuine opposition in the country. I do not see that coming from Congress. I do not expect that from SPs and RJDs of the world. The left has been marginalized. Okay. Aam Aadmi Party has to emerge as a principal political opposition on this country. And that's where my hope lies. Okay, the other. A pleasure talking to you. Thank you.